Okay, that's enough uh, fun with cats. Um, I'm doing a little experiment here to see if I can uh, get these uh, videos on uh, the climate system to go viral. So I figured, you know, get the cats involved. And, uh, you know, that's good for probably about another thousand views per cat, I'm guessing. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, um, lately I've been talking a lot about sort of the science of uh, different elements of the climate system. Um, we know greenhouse gases are going up, we're pumping, we're burning fossil fuels, we're putting tremendous amounts of emissions of CO2 into the atmosphere, and uh, as a result the planet is warming, but it doesn't warm evenly. Um, what happens is that the, in, okay, so think of the Earth as a thermodynamic uh, uh, heat engine or heat system. Um, the equator is much, much warmer. We all know that. Why is it warmer? Because the sun is overhead for longer periods of time. So the solar intensity, um, energy per unit area is larger, or power per unit area, and therefore uh, the equator is heating. Um, think of a flashlight beam directed perpendicular to the surface. You get a nice round spot, bright spot focus. Now tilt the flashlight towards the poles and you get an ellipse on the beam, same amount of energy, so the energy per unit area is reduced. So the poles don't get as much heating. Um, and also they're covered in a lot of white material, snow and ice, which uh, reflects 80% upwards of the solar intensity. So that keeps the poles cooler. Um, now, what is happening is that the greenhouse gas levels have crossed a threshold and in the last 30 years, um, the snow and uh, sea ice cover in the Arctic has been decreasing significantly. On average, the uh, sea ice has declined 11.2% per decade for the last 30 years. It's an exponential decline. And the uh, snow cover in the northern hemisphere um, in the high Arctic is uh, it has declined even more, more like 20% per decade in um, the spring, in, in May, May, June. Um, so the decline is making the Arctic darker, so it's absorbing more sunlight, so it's heating by itself. Its heating rate is about at least five, six, seven times higher than the average temperature. So what that does is a much hotter Arctic, it's reducing the temperature gradient with the equator, um, that temperature gradient, the heat tries to move from hot to cold. So it, as it moves north in either the jet streams, the atmosphere, the air currents, um, or in the oceans, it gets deflected to the right by the Coriolis force. Um, so if the temperature gradient is large, there's lots of heat moving north. So the jet streams uh, build up and become quite fast and strong mostly west to east, and circle the planet. And that they're basically the dividing um, line between cold air masses from north, cold dry air masses, and warm uh, moist air masses. So those, that clash of temperatures creates a pressure difference, creates a, a um, wind, a wind uh, speed. And it acts as sort of like a dividing line between the cold air and the warm air. So normally it's traveling mostly west to east with some waves. Um, and in the winter, in, in, the, in our winter, the northern hemisphere winter, it's, it's quite far south. So we get winter. Um, and then in the summer, it retreats. And that, so we get our summer. So we get well-defined season and the temperature is is uh, well defined as a function of latitude for the most part. There are exceptions. Occasionally you get kinks in the jet stream and it gets colder further south and warmer further north. However, we've crossed this uh, threshold of conditions in the Arctic. So now the jet stream is slower because the temperature difference is lower and thus it becomes affected by other factors like the contrast between the air masses and the ocean, um, the, between the land masses and the ocean. So, um, so what's been happening is we're getting these stuck patterns where the jet stream comes off the North Pacific, 
comes very high up over here, so it brings a lot of moisture and rain, and then comes down this way, so it bypasses California, which is getting in a basically 500-year drought, comes down here, bringing uh, snow and uh, sub-zero degree Celsius temperatures to the southern U.S., and then it comes back up here, and Labrador is record high. Greenland, we're getting very high temperatures, and it comes across, and we're also getting very cold temperatures here. Um, now, when the jet stream gets too wavy, actually chunks of it break off, and that's what happened with this freeze um, in uh, early January, and then just more recently, um, in late January, um, so this chunk breaks off and comes much, much further south. Um, and it looks like the pattern is, a similar pattern appears to be setting up for the first week of uh, February, for February 7th in particular, but that could change. The, the global forecast system model, the US model, the GFS model is showing it, and the European model um, is also showing it. But their models, their projections, um, it's a forecast, you know, things could change. Um, so basically, and so I talked about this in a previous video, and I also said that because there's less heat moving north from the equator, because the north is heating on its own, there's more heat moving south. And I explained how that, um, when it reaches around the Australia latitude, um, it uh, clashes at warm air mass clashes with the cold air from Antarctica, and it amplifies the speed of the jet streams um, there. And uh, so what that does um, is the jets become faster in the southern hemisphere. So Antarctica on the surface gets colder, and the sea ice grows, meanwhile Australia bakes. Um, so where are we leading? Where is this leading to? This is occurring... Um, this is occurring way, way faster than people expected. This is an effect. These extreme uh, weather events that happen, um, an increase in frequency, in uh, intensity, in duration, and in spatial extent of, for example, torrential rain events. Th these things are all... We've got to get over this idea that no weather event is caused by climate change. Okay? It's much... It, make, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, the whole climate circulation pattern is shifting because of climate change. The weather that occurs is all occurring within the system. Okay, so statistically, yes, I mean, you get hots and colds and things happening, but the whole statistical framework of weather is different because we're in a different climate. So where are we going to go? So this is the science the other important thing is that because the warming is so great in the Arctic, that the ocean temperatures are much warmer, and the air temperatures are much warmer, and with sea ice declining, there's an exposed amount of ocean, lots of exposure, so the water is warm, and over shallow areas, specifically over the um, eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, okay, uh, up in this area, okay, the water, there, there's a lot of methane stored on the, in the sediments on the seafloor, and there's also methane clathrates that are there, and we're seeing large emissions. The Russians are measuring large emissions coming off there. Uh, we're measuring large emissions at ground stations. We're measuring satellites, the air satellites, the IASI satellites are measuring large amounts of methane up through the atmosphere. Um, so that is a feedback effect. These cold air masses breaking off, moving south, warm air masses moving north is a feedback. I mean, basically this winter, the Arctic temperatures are 20 degrees Celsius above normal. Um, down in, over the land masses, we're getting 20 degrees Celsius below normal. Well, <laughs> that's a huge change. That's a huge change. Although you could argue, you know, the research needs to determine, you know, is that exactly balanced? Right? Like, maybe the overall temperature hasn't changed that much. It doesn't change that much with these events. I mean, how can the overall temperature jump up or jump, jump up, you know, in a very short period of time? So, but what's happening is we're getting a redistribution of temperatures. And it's having a huge effect on flora 
and fauna. I mean, it looks like the monarch butterfly, which migrates down into Mexico each year and, and comes back up. Um, it looks like it's being wiped out. I mean, there's many reasons for it, but I think uh, abrupt climate change is the final straw. So we're getting these huge warm in, warming situations in the north. Uh, in the Arctic, and we're getting anomalies, so we're getting huge mixing. So where does this end? Well, what happens is, um, there's a couple, of, also, the, the, it's not just the air currents that are messed up, the ocean currents, there's less need for heat to go to the northern hemisphere from the equator. So the, um, the Gulf Stream, which comes up here, and normally comes up quite far, get making, making this part of Europe very mild, it's a high latitude, right? Look at the latitude of the UK and you know, it's very, very marine, uh, warm climate typically in the UK, and it's got the same latitude as Labrador, or as, you know, look at northern Canada here, like Lake Athabasca, right? Lake Winnipeg. I mean, it's got those, the same latitude, but it's warmed by that heat coming across from the Gulf Stream. Well, the Gulf is slowing, and it goes more onto the uh, eastern seaboard continental shelf, but then it also comes across and it seems to be uh, petering out. There's less coming, coming north. So this can cause a, a, a sort of a regional cooling. But the main thing is, is okay, so a couple things can happen. What I think is going to happen is the sea ice will continue to decline and will be gone by, who knows, maybe 2016. Um, I made a projection that it might even be uh, last year. I was wrong on that, um, you know, for various reasons, which I can talk about uh, further. At some other point, but you know the 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 Navy, the U.S. Navy model is saying 2016. The IPCC is now saying 2040, 20 to 2070 in that range. I think it's much more likely to be sooner 